Please understand that small children were not meant to see the following video, for it holds the potential to contain vast use of foul language, and we're from the F-bomb to the N-word, and by the N-word I do mean noob, and not nigga or any of its variations. Please enjoy the following. Peace out. Hello everybody living in the 21st century. You know, the age based around, oh I don't know, technology, cameras, blackberries, and most importantly, video games. Now for those of you who are acting as if you didn't already know, video games are a craze that has been sweeping the nation for the past, I don't know, 10, 15 years, and much like every popular subject, whether it's Miley Cyrus and her weed addiction, or Charlie Sheen and his bi-winning proposals, or, you know, some girl getting out of a car and she looks like she has some sort of malfunction with her body, it's bound to hit some sort of controversial means. Much like video games. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, but video games can be educational, inspirational, and they're a good way to make money, and it's a great way to relieve stress, have fun, and it has a lot of positive effects. However, why is it under attack? Well, the reasons are varying. Some are violence, and, well, the others are this. Well, the Green Police trying to reach your kids at home on the video game systems. In the Sim City Society games, kids have to build environmentally friendly towns or face a fine. That sounds like a, a good lesson. But is this promoting education or just a liberal agenda with what they actually have to purchase? Joining us now is radio host and parent T.J. McCormick. Nice to see you this morning, T.J. And you, babe. So let's get into some specifics. You know, that sounds like a good lesson to be learned, be uh -huh. environmentally friendly. We right. don't want people polluting. Right. But there, it's when you dive into the specifics of the game that it gets a little bit uh, gray or not green. Yeah, and when you use fear, you know. I, I, think, I think right off the top, you know, anytime I see a social, uh, a social cause that somebody's profiting off of, right away, credibility to me is in question. And, uh, yeah, you know, I think the scare tactics, the guilt involved, you know. Well, let's uh, be specific sure. because in this game, Sim City Society is one specific uh -huh. thing is players choose alternative energy options like wind and solar and stuff uh, for city infrastructure and soy farms and stuff right. instead of nuclear power. Right. Here's what the game designers have to say about this. This is Ian Roberts. He's a game designer and he's defending these games. He says video games are about real world issues and they're important much like films. They let us experience things we never could and help us understand ourselves, each other, and the world around us. Which and with that newfound understanding, we now know what to do, what not to do, in positions that we would otherwise not have any idea on, well, how to maintain. We now know some of the good decisions and some of the bad decisions and some of the consequences for said decisions. So it's kind of like going to school at home for fun, and that's a problem? I don't know, man. Sounds pretty shady to me. There's one out there uh, where, where uh, you're in charge of the World Environmental Organization and uh, the fate, it's called Fate of the World. Right. So you get, here, 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 Timmy, here, you're five, here. Play Fate of the World and, and we'll all be on your shoulders, son. These guys actually have kids freaking out and, and with sweaty palms worried that they're not going to kill a bunch of uh, virtual uh, you know, polar bears. The following is not an over-dramatization. It is the exact quote of what the man said little Jimmy would be doing at five years of age. No! <laughs> How do I save money? The polar bears! <laughs> Look at me, don't get me! God, don't get me because of the polar bears! <laughs> what do I do? <laughs> Because I'm sure five-year-old Jimmy knows all about the money secrets and all there is to know about economics and all the little intricacies of deforestation and all that and the whole nine. You know, the stuff that you learned in high school that you should have known when you were five. Makes a lot of sense. I know. Lee Boyd Malvo, the trigger man in the DC Beltway snipings, mm -hmm. was trained by John Muhammad on Halo. In fact, uh, oh. Mama knew to do that because the Army was using Halo on a sniper base to do one thing, to get the snipers prepared psychologically to be willing to kill as snipers. For those of you out there who don't know, Jack Thompson wrote a book. And, well, he called these Halo games and other games like it, Murder Simulators. Now, he was saying that these games get you physically, mentally, spiritually prepared to undergo these criminal acts and these mischievous deeds. However, I've played this, this, and this, 
And yes, folks, even games where you rip somebody's spine out and show it to them, this. And I don't think I'm ready to go rip somebody's spine out through their stomach, tear somebody's head off, shoot them in the face with a sniper rifle. Because honestly, I don't even know how to use a gun. I could go pew, 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 but if I'm out of ammo, I don't know how to reload, I don't know how to clear a jam, I don't know how to do any of that stuff that could happen actually on the battlefield. Like this kid probably didn't, from just playing Halo, as Jack Thompson says. And after all, when I was eight, I loved car games. When I was eight, I was having fun driving cars. That doesn't mean I was learning how to drive a car. Uh, you know, it's definitely, kids definitely can pick up the game. Uh, if parents buy it for them. That's the big thing. Uh, I, have a, I have a buddy that works at a local retail store. He's a manager there. A bunch of group of kids came in. They all said, hey, we're going to uh, mm -hmm. get the game. He asked them if they were under 17. No. He said no to them. I mean, uh, retailers are doing a good job right now. It's been proven time and time sure, again. Sure, but none, none less, the, guys, if, if you, you, know, uh, you, you bring a game into a house, nothing to stop an eight-year-old kid from becoming a terrorist and shooting people. That's right. Uh, on a yeah, video game. Yeah, but you're not game. a terrorist. That's, uh, that's ridiculous. Uh, yeah. You're not a terrorist. All right, uh, John and You're Jim. not really. It's pixelated violence. It's violence. It's not, it's not real. It's right. not real. It's John, not real. John and Jim, the debate goes on. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Not for long. Good attack. I'll tell you what uh, violence is. What is it really the video games corrupting the kids, or is it just a bad overall parenting fail over the past decade in which parents are not doing the whole nine? going through the whole process of learning what the video games are about, learning what they are teaching their children, learn about the content of the game. Because, I mean, after all, when you buy a new car, you just don't buy a car all willy-nilly, silly-like. You go out and you pull out the facts. You ask that stupid car fox I see on these commercials nowadays, and you get out the hard details. You know how much mileage, everything that this car has been through, and you know about it. So what's so hard about picking up the game, and which is conveniently labeled on the front corner with Mature 17+. Plus. Not too hard to miss, if you ask me anyway. And besides, you know, let's just say your kid wants to get a video game and he comes up with this. You read this and you tell him no. And if you don't want to tell him no, and you really want to know what's so bad about the game, look at the back. See that right there? Blood and gore. What's that right there? What's that right there? Partial nudity? Oh no. Intense violence? What's that last one? Strong language? Strong language? But you know, the, I mean, you know, parents just don't know. They'll go ahead and say, here you go, it's got shiny colors and buy the game. But I guarantee you if um, little Jimmy walks up with a cartridge of Girls Gone Wild, you'll see that and be like, oh no, you can't have that. No. And you'd put it back on the shelf. And you probably even looked at it and examined it and was all like this and oh no. What's so hard about looking at a small, what, one inch by half an inch, one inch, I don't know, little label that says M Mature 17 Plus.